What's up guys, I'm Kate with Tight Match and today I'm very excited to have my friend Kaylee from My Type. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you probably know her page and she is the one who finally convinced me and figured out that I'm an ESTP instead of an ENTP. And the way that Kay types and she's teaching me a type is very interesting, very unique. And what she does is she is looking at people's speech patterns, but also using her FI as an ENTJ to type. And I wanted to get her on here live to talk about how she types and go through like what the different functions look like in their, in their speech patterns. So we were just talking before this started and um, about how you type using FI. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so how I type personally is through what I think is FI, um, simply because whenever I'm hearing someone speak, I know immediately how I feel about it. So if I hear somebody using FI, um, my immediate reaction is, why are you telling me this? I didn't ask to hear it. But I know that FI users use FI to relate. So that, for me, immediately indicates that they don't have FE. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Whereas when I hear TE, I normally think they're just wrong. Um, and they're wrong because of their foundation that they're using. Normally, that's what I notice. And when I hear TI, it's like it lights up my brain. I feel as though um, it, the person that has it is trying to make me comfortable by giving me enough information for me to make a judgment on it. And when I hear an I, it's always moving forward in a conversation. So um, the bigger differences with NI and NE is that NE always goes wide. It basically, it detects isolated instances and it pulls them together. And not only does it do that, it explains how they connect. So um, whenever I hear an NE user, um, I just think, oh, wow, like they move, their brains move so fast, you know, because mm. they're all these different areas and they, they bring it to make, um, it's not even like they give you one answer. They, they don't, I feel. I, I don't yeah. think they ever get a direct answer from an any user. Um, and that, it's I always think, just like, it's more agreeable. yeah, it's very whimsical almost, um. But I like it. <laughs> they yeah. Really, yeah. Whereas when I think hear that, it, sorry. Do you think that, okay, for example, like, I know that ESTPs and ESFPs are um, famous for believing, like, conspiracy theories. Do you think that's NE demon sort of drawing incorrect connections? Conspiracy theories. Because you'll always hear like them say things like, it's all connected, man. You've got to look at it. I actually haven't experienced that. So Really? No. Um, oh. I always feel like with an ESTP or ESFPs, I, I do detect that they're, they're feeling something. I always say to um, ESTPs and ESFPs, go with your gut. You're normally always right, but it's that I almost have noticed that people feel that their inferior function is cheating. So, for instance, if I use FI, I almost think, why should I tell you how I feel? You're, it's irrelevant. But really, I would be more effective if I tell you exactly what I want from an interaction by using FI rather than using TE to basically... I don't, so let's go back to ESTP. Um, whenever an ESTP or an ESFP uses NI, I believe it's a gut reaction that's usually always right, but they still seek out concrete evidence to prove that yeah. it is accurate. And likewise, when I use FI, I always feel sickened when I use it. Um, but at the same time, it gets me, uh, it gives me a clear answer to what I'm trying to do. 
if I'd be vulnerable and it works. It just works. Yeah. Because it's in like the aspirational role in that case, right? Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Um so I wanted to talk to you. You said that different people have to type in different ways and like not everybody can type in the same way. And your partner in ENTP, um, how he types is totally different from how you type as an ENTJ. Definitely. So as an ENTP, and I've lived with one for 10 years, um, I believe it's really sharpened the way I use TU. And likewise <laughs> him more so with NI, more than TU, because he has T, T critic. So he's always critical of what I suggest um, mm. and tries to make me explain a pattern that I can't. So that's our, uh, that's where our friction lies. But he, yeah, he types through speech. Um, he basically notices with TI, it always gives a foundation first before he, before the person comes to one point Whereas with TE, it's almost like it's conclusive. But again, that really varies on where the TE is. So if you look at TE child, you could almost feel that they're always certain about what they say because they don't acknowledge TI. Whereas for me, with TE hero, I always have to doubt what I say because I'm always aware that I've missed something out. Um, but Back to my partner, uh, as an EP, what he does is he listens to speech and he notices with SI and also with John Beebe, he says it accounts. That's what the function ultimately is trying to do. But where SI is concerned, it will always go backwards in a conversation, you know, and if the person has any hero, it derives me from what they've experienced or what they've accounted for. Whereas um, if you look at an NI user, especially NI child, I've noticed a lot of ISTPs and ISFPs will mistype as an NI DOM um, because yeah. NI child is so loud. But I always feel that people need to remember that the child function is the loudest because it behaves like a child, it wants attention. Um, so that's how we have formulated our way of typing and it's how I type. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, for me, I'm trying to learn from you and from Ren, like your different systems and come up with like my own way of typing. But I think the perceiving functions are harder for me to um, lock down, but the judging functions scream out at me. Like specifically, like I can I can see FI in a second because it's it's just like, okay, they're not doing what I'm doing. It's like it's not bouncing back things in the same way. Um, well, I feel with these things that the way you should type is through using your body. That sounds great. Yeah. But um, basically with these TPs, because you have SE hero. Yeah. It's almost like you know how somebody is making, you're reading into something a lot more complicated than anybody else. So I feel that when your body is receiving an emotion, that's how you've detected FI from FE, almost. Because the FI part of you is uh, your trickster, and therefore it's a bit more complicated, so you're more drawn to it almost. I really believe that we're all drawn to our shadow functions. And when we see them being used, it's almost like, a, why are they talking like that? Or why are they using these functions, you know? Um, I've come to realize uh, the pleasure for every human is the, in the shadow functions, I think. Can't prove that yet, but uh, I'm working on it. But where speech is concerned, where like, for instance, an ENTP, they read the metaphysical. So it doesn't matter what you say, they look at why you say it. 
and they connect it to instances where they've heard it before and how it was used to derive meaning from it. So what my partner does as an ENTP, he'll watch maybe 30 interviews of types that he thinks are the same. And, uh, and then he compares the speech patterns to, mm-hmm. let's say, an ISFP, if he's looking at ENTPs, or um, because they have different speech patterns. So with an ISFP, I notice they will always say, you know, you know, like, you get it, like, you have to just get it. You've got to read into the information that they're projecting for you to interpret because they have any trickster, so they don't connect those dots. Um, but I also feel um, different functions play out differently on different people. So like SE child, my one, will mean I will move my face a lot, even though I'm controlled. I can't really control the way I move my face. And mm-hmm. if you have an ENFJ as well, they will do that. So they, they affirm a lot with their eyebrows. I was looking at an interview with Trevor Noah and Ellen I don't know how to pronounce the surname. The generous? Um, yes. Okay. And it was interesting because she asked a question mm-hmm. and Noah went on to explain the why, how, you know, you define that question first. <laughs> it made me laugh because she just wanted an answer. Yeah. And I always feel that with SE and NE together, you're ultimately on the same trajectory but you come from different angles so I always liken it to being um, really close friends but I think in the states you have Republicans and Democrats Mm -hmm. you can be friends together but you have different uh, beliefs almost so when when they're your running mate it's like the SE hero is basically trying to find the true meaning and the ENTP is almost looking for the uh, the reality of it. So I always joke and say that the ENTP is actually the ultimate realist, <laughs> and mm. uh, the ESTP seeking uh, meanings, which is why they are so much more in the moment than everybody else. But in the moment doesn't mean um, it doesn't mean that you're Olympic athletes or you know super present and doing backflips and cartwheels, which is what I feel like everybody understands, which really frustrates me, because it's about your interpretation of the physical, um, the the physical environment, and the details of which you see. Like, whereas an ISTP, I always say their brains are like geometry, you know, the, the angles, the colors, everything that they see is very different. It's very complex. Um, intuitives are more um, vague. I feel like I'm being really vague right now because I'm literally trying to define a meaning. Well, I think the best way to do this, though, is to explain this to just show people, you know, in a concrete example. So I thought we could go through, you had like five questions or whatever that you're having people send you videos or audio Uh, and then based upon what you see in them what you hear actually from them you're typing um so i wanted to be like an example for that i'll show you how to prove that you don't have si so if i say to you um tell me about tell me about your last holiday that you went on is this like (laughs) because i can't remember (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, no. I can't. okay I'm like, I'm like what did I like not too long ago <laughs> okay um I went to Arizona and I went with my boyfriend and we stayed in Flagstaff I absolutely love Flagstaff and would like to live there someday and we went to the Grand Canyon like all the typical sites um I don't know. but what do you mean <laughs> So basically what SE does, it reports, right? It reports what it did. So what you just did there was you recreated that. So I will report very similarly to you. So if I was to say, what did I do on my last holiday, which I'll be completely making up because 
I don't remember. No. I, <laughs> yeah. I went to Barcelona, yeah. Um, if I was to tell you what I did, it would be like a, it'd be more like a storytelling. Whereas with SI, it will take you, it will describe, it, they do it so differently. Um, I don't mm. have time to give you an example. Um, I always have to trick myself and say, once upon a time, there was me. And what I did was go to Barcelona and I walked through the streets. It, the way that SI describes it's it makes you feel like you're standing behind the person. As uh, they, yeah. Whereas with SC, it, it almost recreates what happened. Okay. Again, that's not anything tangible um, to, I, I'm not, I haven't defined it well enough, but it, that's what it does when I hear it. So um, with the SC users, it will. It doesn't matter how far back you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It will seem like it could have been yesterday. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Where SI, it makes you hear that distance when they're speaking. Like I hear it. They they will describe a moment as though it, it's over. It's finished. It's 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 completed. Mm. But it doesn't do that at all. Um, not at all, it can't. I always say, tell me about yesterday to my SE users that are clients, and um, they will tell it as though it was um, happening, like just had ha like it just happened. Okay. Yeah. So it's a report. I find it to be a report of what yeah. happened. When I am asked like those types of questions, like tell me about your last holiday what did you do today um i'm always reluctant to give like too long of an answer because i think it's not very interesting for the other person to hear about you know and i just want to like if they prompt me more like oh like what did where did you go in the grand canyon then i'm like open up more and more and more but i don't want to be boring you know i just i don't want to give them the bad experience i think well you're just asking this to be polite so i'll give you a short like I went here and did this and then it's over well I feel like in this type community people feel that SE is about um giving and experiencing giving yeah. but it's about experiencing which is different so when mm -hmm. I said oh I have SE because I was I wasn't giving an experience I was like no I think this jargon is too overused in the type community. Mm -hmm. I think SE gives an experience because it is experiencing. So if you look at a child that has SE, and let's say there is a circle on the floor, the child might walk over and tap the circle with their foot and jump over it. And then another child will look and say an SI child and might look and watch the SE child and think, what are they doing? Looks like they're having fun, you know? And then, then the SE child starts to master their, uh, that, that skill almost. And that's with something physical. It could be something as personal as writing or drawing or designing or analyzing. SE is good at all of those things because it's outside of you. It's about looking at the details outside of you. So what SE is always doing is it is that it's experiencing, and then it's in, and it's engaging with something outside of oneself. So it's not about giving somebody an experience. It's about yeah. so for instance, if you look at an INFJ or an INTJ, they are not trying to give an experience. They're reluctant to engage in an experience. That that's more so what it is. And then with SE Hero, it's more willing to engage in an experience. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I don't think it's about, oh, I'm trying to give you experience. Because I've met ENFPs that do that, and they don't have SE. But they yeah. try to create a, they do try to create an experience. I feel maybe look at FI as doing that. Because I know INFPs that create wonderful experiences. Um, 
because they use nostalgia and they use FI to know how that person, um, how they feel, what they value, you know. So I know an INFP mother and she created an Easter uh, trail for her children. And at every single point, you know, there was a, an experience. Ah, uh, yeah. She's got SE Trickster. So you could argue those two little girls will grow up thinking, my mom always created all these magical experiences for me. You know, mm -hmm. that's an experience. But I, I just feel like these terms and definitions are, are wrongly used at the moment. You know, mm -hmm. no out and and explaining what these functions are actually doing. And if you look at John Beebe's work, he, he actually says what they're doing. He start, he tells you what they do when they're in the first stage, second stage, and third. You know, um, if I look at Effie, I think it's, I'm not sure of the order, but it's validating, affirming, and then relating. Yeah, that's what it does in those stages. The more they what do you mean stages. So the first stage of FE will be validating. Right, but what go, stage? Sorry? Like but what do you mean by a stage like in life or like in a oh, conversation? In a conversation during an interaction. Okay. So okay. an FE hero user will come along and they'll listen to you. Um mm -hmm. And then they will start to go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, they start to affirm. And, and then they start relating. You know, they start saying, you know, they'll give you a compliment. They will basically make you comfortable enough to open up because now they can relate to you. And that's what the goal of FE is. So FE Hero comes in, it's like straight away it relates. You know, it's like, I want to relate to you. Um, but a lot of ENFJs think that they are really uh, introverts because they're like, I don't like anyone. I'm like, you do. You just don't want to relate, you know. You don't want to have to relate to everyone you meet. And there's all these myths that need debugging, I, I feel. Um, and it's really, if one studies the, what the cognitive functions are actually trying to do, I don't think it's hard to mistake an interaction, you know. Um, I myself, I've been typed by two people in this community. Um, one immediately typed me uh, quite fast with any hero, but the same any hero user, not, sorry, not the same any hero user, a different any hero user, for I was introverted. Um, so I had to uh, remind this person that you have to factor in uh, culture. I'm from the UK. We're a lot more reserved than Americans. So um, they can, as an extrovert, if you're looking at my energy, you can think I'm an introvert, but I'm very forward person. And, um, and I also want to, basically, with your functions, if you have T hero or T child or parent, it's where that person and how that person interacts with that function. So the personality affects the way the person uses their functions. So if I if I look at an INTJ, I was walking down the street and um, I saw this man and his son. And I was talking about when the children would go back to school. He has an INTJ son. I was talking for about five minutes. And then I said, well, perhaps they'll go back after their six weeks holiday. And the only thing the little boy said, and when I say little boy, he's probably like 13. He's, he said, eight weeks. You know, like, to correct me on that detail. Yeah. Um, which could be mistaken for SE parent, but it's not because he's, the intention of why he said it is different. So with T parent, it's always correcting facts that could be mistaken. With SE parent, it's almost being true to the reality. And I wasn't discussing a reality, I was discussing a fact. So he corrected the fact. Uh, whereas with T hero, it's got more of a heroic approach. So it's like, yeah, make all these mistakes and I'll, I'll Basically, I'll come down when everything needs to be fixed. 
So it's more laid back. But when it does come in, it's quite ferocious, I feel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know that your view on the hero function is more that um, it's not always present. And that it just, it comes in in more like a crisis mode to fix things, right? Um, it's not that. It's more that it's always present because, again, in my opinion, a person can only articulate through T or FE. So you okay. see there what I just did is me correcting everything that you said, not one thing that you said. I'm not picking at one thing. I'm okay. going to allow you to make your point and see how you misinterpreted what I said. That's more T here. So I wait for the damage, come in, correct okay. it, and then present it back. So I will allow somebody to speak so I can hear where the mistakes are and then pick up those mistakes after they Okay. Pick. Yeah. I thought we talked about this, though. Maybe it was in regard to perceiving functions. Girl. With the, with the, I don't know. We talked about something where you said that you don't think that the hero is like playing, I guess, maybe an active role all the time. But maybe you meant that in regard to perceiving functions since we can only really communicate through the judging functions. Right. So yeah, I always use the analogy that if you look mm -hmm. at the functions, so again, I'm going to be abstract here to bring out the meaning. If you look mm -hmm. at your house, your house belongs in a country right where your house is your house is the inferior function right it's just there it's okay um the country is like the child so if you imagine that the country is you know people play with it you know come settle do whatever and then if you look at the earth as the parent the hero chills in space when it sees the house is getting attacked that's when it comes in you know, it can monitor from from high above and only interfere when it's necessary. So when things are going on, you know, if cars are driving past the house, the hero still is relaxing. Um, but it's always on. It doesn't ever switch off because it's the okay. Hero. But it, I mean, in terms of, say, for instance, me with TE, if I start to uh, detect that something is overall incorrect that's when I will step in. But the way I speak is through facts. It's, it's con I'm always concluding. And mm -hmm. the guy always opens up a fact, you know? So if I say, for instance, if I'm around a TI hero user and I, and I might say, um, let's say, for example, I say, yeah, books go on shelves, for instance. They'll be like, not always, you know, books mm -hmm. go on the table <laughs> I'm like yeah but you know what I mean you know you know widely known books go on shelves because facts are what everybody knows to be accurate but it's not the truth TI mm -hmm. I feel is the truth I'll give it to TI <laughs> it, okay TI is always looking and verifying so I think one of these um people influencers I, I'm not sure what to call people in this space um, they said that T is um, a thought hacker or thought eater it wants to eat everybody else's uh, thoughts <laughs> I'm always wanting to know what people are thinking because I want to understand them because I can't I can do it but I, I don't do it I'm I have a lazier approach, which will tell you that T is in my ego, not in the shadow. Mm -hmm. um, TI more so is about verifying what somebody says and they have to process it internally rather than externally. Whereas I will just take your word for it if I'm not in the, if I'm not in the mood to really go down that lane. So I could be like, oh, that person said they're a teacher, so they're a teacher. Whereas my partner, who's an ENTP, they'll be like, 
well, what do they teach? They could be any kind of teacher. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask what teacher, what they taught. You know, I don't know. And then his joke with me is always, you never ask any questions. Because, one, I don't have FE, which tells you I'm not trying to understand where that person or where the person in front of me, the object, is coming from. Yeah. So, again, well, I... How, how do you understand... How do you find out what people think if, you don't ask, if you're not asking them questions? I listen. I do ask questions, but it's not to relate. Okay. It's all like black and white. So I'll say, well, did you mean this or that? So if you said that, then why this? And if this, then that. And then that helps me um, basically pick apart what someone said. Mm. That makes sense. Um, it's more of a closed question, I think, than an, an open question. Mm. Like a, a yes or no? Yeah, everything for me is just yes or no. So when I'm trying to get something done, I really don't want the reason anymore. I just want to know why yes, why no. Uh, not why, sorry, yes or no. So um, if I say to you, if I'm working with somebody in business, and I'll say, they'll say, yeah, we've got some problems. And I'll be like, okay, what, what is it exactly that your company is suffering with? Um, they'll then say, oh, uh, it's our staff. I'll be like, what about the staff? You know, I just need them to be direct so yeah. I can get to the problem faster because I really feel as though ENTJs just want to identify a problem and solve it. Whereas with ENTPs, they're more agreeable. You know, I, I was talking to my partner today and he basically expressed that he doesn't need to lead because he sees how much it means to somebody else to lead. Because he reads the metaphysics. It's like, I'll get the best out of that person by letting them lead. And if I don't like them or if they have a bad interaction, he just takes that power away and then he takes, he goes forward. So I always feel that NE is very agreeable um, because it has the ability to look at all of the possibilities, not just one. We're just talking about whatever. Uh, what you said, though, as far as like you're just trying to like get people to be direct and get to the problem, could that be the result of also your interaction style of being an in charge? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's why a lot of people confuse ENFJs, ENTJs, ESTPs, and ESTJs with each other um, mm. because of the direct nature that they have. Um, yeah. And you have to remember that the seat through types also are direct. So yeah. J, INFJ, ISTJ, and the ISTP, they're all direct too. It's just about identifying where that extroverted function is. Is it at the top or is it parent? Mm -hmm. you know? um, again, I think a lot of people need to see clear examples of these types to to see the differences and it's not available nobody's done it i'd love to say and recommend a place where i can see that those types are accurate yeah so, um mm -hmm. i see so many infjs online uh saying that intjs i see have seen so many entps that are estps i've seen mm -hmm. uh, ENTPs that are ENFPs and um, yeah. you know again it's my opinion so that's the way I, I, I notice um, the inconsistencies and the discrepancies with uh, personal typing and verification um, when I have my clients if I do not see that aha you know like oh yeah I do do that how do you know then it's wrong um somebody messaged me actually and they wrote that if the type that you're reading if the description 
makes you feel like, yeah, that's me, it's more often than not, not you. It's because um, the way you view that function is in your shadow and you, and you like it. You know, I always typed when years ago, I used to type as an ENTP. I'm not, I'm a control type. Um, so therefore, when I was reading that, you know, this chaos trait that they're associated with, I was like, yeah, I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to the airport just willy nilly. I'm going to be there on time uh, with the right amount of time. I want my hotel to be fine. I want everything controlled. I want all the risks mm -hmm. moved. <laughs> um, whereas the ENTP is very okay with all of that because their movement you know uh, another thing is when you see somebody somebody's interaction style you can see when they're movement or controlled as well um but that being said i've seen infjs seem like enfps but they don't have fi so you know that infjs and i feel that's when they're really uncomfortable they start you know moving their spine bouncing and really affirming hard um but yeah for me i i sorry i've gone off on a tangent again 